At one point in time, every circus and every sideshow had a strongman, someone with unprecedented strength able to capture the audience's imagination. And no one did it with as much passion as this next man. In today's episode of Unusual as Usual, we're researching the forgotten story of the father of bodybuilding, aka Eugene Sandow. Friedrich Wilhelm Müller was born on the 2nd of April 1867 in what is now known today as Kaliningrad, Russia. As a young boy, he was, in his own words, weedy, fragile and pale skinned. However, at the age of 10, his father took him on a trip to Rome. It was here that his life would change forever. You see, the great sculptures he saw there in their grand pauses, bulging biceps and washboard abs sparked something in his imagination and he began to dream of one day looking just like them. Returning home, he began to dedicate himself to achieving this ideal state of physical perfection. He took tips from professional circus strongmen and when he was 18, he left his family and home behind and traveled across Europe performing as a professional wrestler, adopting the stage name Eugene Sandow. At just 19 years old, Sandow had moved on from wrestling, preferring to perform strongman stunts in various sideshows. He was initially known for strongman feats such as ripping a full deck of cards in half, smashing glass bottles and his impressive barbell routines. However, audiences quickly became far more fascinated by Sandow's bulging biceps than by the amount of weight he was able to lift. While in Brussels, he visited the gym of a fellow strongman, Ludwig Derlacher, better known under his stage name, Professor Attila. On Derlacher's recommendation, Sandow began entering strongman competitions, competing in matches against leading figures in the sport, such as Charles Sampson and Henry McCann. Sandow was clearly very strong, but while other professional strongmen existed long before him, none had possessed such a chiselled physique. And it was that that Sandow was really interested in. He travelled back to Rome, this time armed with a tape measure, and he meticulously measured the marble sculptures he had seen as a young boy. Using these measurements, he developed the formula to get what he called the Grecian ideal the exact measurements he classed as the perfect physique. Sandow's physique must have already appeared godly to most people, but using his new blueprints, he began chiseling away at his own physique, carefully targeting groups of muscles to exercise while ignoring other muscle groups. Eventually, building his physique to the exact proportions of the Greek and Roman statues. In the process, becoming one of the first athletes to intentionally develop his muscles to predetermined dimensions. To accompany his perfect physique, Sandow developed poses. He dubbed these muscle display performances. And the routine was a precursor to the bodybuilding competition poses that we still see today. His routines and physique quickly made Sandow a sensation and highly sought after carnival attraction. In 1889, Derlacher encouraged Sandow to travel to London, England, and take part in a strongman competition. He beat the reigning champion hands down, which gained him instant fame and recognition for his strength. This kick-started his career as an athletic superstar, and soon he was receiving requests from all over Britain for performances. He even befriended the likes of King George V, Thomas Edison, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. In 1894, Sandow featured in a short film shot by Thomas Edison. The film included him flexing his muscles in various poses, something his fans had grown to prefer over seeing him performing any actual feats of physical strength, followed by executing a perfect backflip. It was around this time that during his live shows, he had taken to covering his body in white powder to appear even more like a living marble statue. 
All this attention caught the eye of Louis Sear, a fellow strongman. Sear was undoubtedly extremely strong and took great delight in destroying his opponents with his extreme displays of brute strength. He even attempted to publicly challenge Sandow to a test of strength, on multiple occasions in fact, going as far as purchasing tickets to Sandow's performances with the intention of interrupting the show by challenging him from the audience. However, Sandow was a different breed of strongman. He was more interested in the aesthetics of muscle structure, in stark contrast to Louis Sears style, and always declined Sears attempts to a showdown. Instead, he poured his efforts into various business ventures. He authored five books and founded a successful mail order physical instruction catalog. He also lent his image to a brand of cigars in 1894 to promote his first American tour, quite possibly becoming the world's first celebrity endorsement of a product. He followed this up by bringing out Sandow's Health and Strength Cocoa and even his own monthly fitness magazine with the catchy title Sandow's Magazine of Physical Culture. But those accomplishments pale in comparison to his next venture. On the 14th of September 1901, Sandow held the first ever bodybuilding contest, which he dubbed simply the Great Competition. However, it was not created overnight. In fact, it took three years to organize. In July of 1898, keen to advertise his competition, Sandow wrote that he would afford encouragement to those who were anxious to perfect their physiques. Encouragement was indeed a noble reward, however, it was also supplemented with a cash prize. First place would receive a gold statuette of Sandow and 1,000 guineas, about $5,000 at the time. Second place would receive a silver statuette and 500 guineas, around $2,500, and third place would receive a bronze statuette. The competition was held at London's Royal Albert Hall and was judged by a panel of three. Sandow himself, Sir Charles Laws, a famous sculptor and amateur athlete, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of the Sherlock Holmes series. The contest was a huge success, and it completely sold out with hundreds of fans having to be turned away at the door. It was an extravagant pageant of beauty and brawl, which laid the ground for the Mr. Universe and Mr. Olympia competitions we still find today. It was the first bodybuilding competition ever to be held in Britain, and it was legendary. In third place came A.C. Smythe of Middlesex. Second place went to D. Cooper, and the much coveted first place trophy went to William Murray of Nottingham. Unfortunately though, all good things must come to an end, and for Sandow, the end started with the false accusation that he was a German spy. This hurt his reputation and eventually his fame, fortune and sex appeal dwindled. In 1925, he was involved in a serious car accident. He survived, even managed to single-handedly lift his car out of the ditch, but he would never again reach his peak of physical fitness. Eugene Sandow died in his home in Kensington, London on the 14th of October, 1925, aged 58 likely from a stroke brought on after lifting his car out of the ditch. On his grave stands a one and a half ton natural pink sandstone marker. And with that, Sandow's story faded into the history books. That was until 1977, when Sandow's forgotten history was rescued from obscurity and his contribution to the sport of bodybuilding was finally acknowledged. Since then, a bronze statue of Sandow has been presented to the winner of the Mr. Olympia contest, to many cementing his role as the father of bodybuilding. The award has gone on to be known simply as the Sandow. And there we have it, the forgotten story of the father of bodybuilding, Eugene Sandow. Do you class Sandow's pioneering technique of bodybuilding a form of body modification? Let me know in the comment section below and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And remember, stay unusual as usual.
If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more modified marbles, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.